Good evening, everyone. This is the last night. This is the last session of this course. We are going to end this course tonight. So this is something very, very good. And um, congratulations to everyone that has in this course. Of course, you're going to continue with um, this process, but now we are going to end this uh, month. Time flies and now we are at the end of this course. So we are going to continue with the thing that we were saying yesterday. And we are going to end at this seeing the last part of the conversation that we were um, uh, reading yesterday. Then we are going to talk about something else because it is the last topic that we are going to develop in this course. So, Remember that we were talking about the telephone uh, vocabulary and also we were talking about some expression that we can use in a um, telephone conversation. Good evening. And uh, yesterday we were seeing an uh, example about the conversation that we can have uh, through the telephone with someone. And we were saying a formal or very, very formal conversation that two people has through the telephone. Now, remember that Ryan asked Helen to call back, right? When she can uh, contact Natalie or Natalie. And if the, the girl called Helen can uh, contact her or talk with her, she needs to call back to Ryan. So in this case, we are going to um, read about the response or that conversation that they had, the first conversation that they have. So now we are going to read the second part of the conversation when Natalie calls Ryan back. So in this case, it is not uh, Helen talking with Ryan. In this case, it's Ryan talking with Natalie because Helen passed the message to Natalie. So we are going to see the conversation and the words that they uh, are using in this um, example. Okay, we have here the conversation that we um, were reading yesterday. That is the example that we were seeing yesterday. Now we are going to see the second part of this conversation. And we have, in this case, is Ryan talking with Natalie. So we are going to have a Ryan and we are going to have Natalie. So Natalie is calling. Ryan answered the phone saying, hello. And Natalie says, Hi, Ryan, this is Natalie returning your call. So she is returning the call. And Ryan says, hi, Natalie, thanks for getting back to me. I was calling about the shipment of keyboards for our office. We haven't gotten them yet. Getting me back. I was calling. about the shipment of keyboards.
Now we have Natalie. And she says, oh, that's not good. They were supposed to be delivered three days ago. Exactly, and we have a new group of employees starting on Monday. So we really need those keyboard as soon as possible. Okay, we have the second part of the conversation in, in this moment here. And we have that uh, Ryan is having a problem with the keyboards that they ask for this um, company to send to them. So he is calling to tell Natalie that the shipment is not, um, that is not yet in the office. And she is trying to help Ryan with that problem. So after that, she is telling her that she that he needs, or in that case, the office needs the keyboards. She says, oh, that's not good. They were supposed to be delivered three days ago. 
Exactly, and we have a new group of employees starting on Monday. So we really need those keyboards as soon as possible. Okay, I will log into it right away. If necessary, we can send you an emergency overnight shipment. Thanks, Natalie, I appreciate it. No problem, uh, Ryan, I will call you back a little later as soon as I have more information. Sounds good, talk to you soon, bye. So in that case, it, they are trying to solve the problem that they have. In this case, they are talking on the phone. They are not seeing each other. Um, so in that case, they can uh, have a lot of information about each other. So in that case, we have like this kind of formal conversation in which maybe we can have this uh, kind of conversation or a telephone conversation um, all the time because of our job. So it is very common to have this kind of conversation. And we are going to use this kind of uh, phrases or uh, sentences that can help us to sound more formal. So in this case, it says telephone English phrases for formal conversation. From this conversation, we can learn phrases for beginning a phone call, talking and leaving messages, checking and clarifying information and finishing a phone call. So we have three uh, important things that we can uh, learn about in this kind of conversation that are very formal. So we have, we can learn. Phrases for beginning a phone call. Taking and leaving messages. And also checking and clarifying information. And also we can learn another thing that is very important that is the ending the phone call. So in this kind of example, we can learn these things. There are a lot of things that we can learn about an example, a simple example. We can learn how to begin a call, that what's, um, or um, which phrases we can use at the beginning of the call. Then we have taking and leaving messages. In this case, in the first example, Helen was the girl that was uh, taking this kind of message about uh, something important that someone that is calling wants to say. Then also we can learn how to do for leaving a message when we want to talk about in a specific topic with someone. Then checking and clarifying information. That part is the second example. That is the part of checking and clarifying information about something that we want to know. Uh, we want to know the state of that thing, or we can uh, have some help about a specific topic. And then we have the ending of the phone call, how to end a phone call. It is not just like hang out or just saying bye like this, because we can uh, add some phrases or words to this uh, ending of phone calls. So for the first thing, we are going to divide this one and we have four, begin a phone call. We have in this one, it says, when Helen says, 
Oh, when Helen answers the phone, she says, that is the first, the first phrase that we can read in the example. Mind town computer solutions. Speaking, uh, Helen is speaking, how can I help you? This is a common way for a receptionist at a company or organization to answer uh, the phone. So in that case, that is the, the first phrase that we were, uh, that we have in the example. And when we are calling to a company or an office or something like that, we are going to hear that phrase very, very common. But we have another uh, expression that we can use in this situation. So we have some alternatives and we have number, let's see, we are going to do it like this. A, thank you for calling Mindtown Computer Solution. How may I direct your call? Then we have B, Mindtown Computer Solutions. Good afternoon. Just saying the name of the company and a salutation. Then for uh, when we are speaking, we need to introduce ourselves and we can say, hello, this is, and we can say the name. And if you want, you can add your company name and we have some examples. We have A, hello, this is Ryan Bartos. Or we can say letter B, hello, this is Ryan Bardos from Paramount Publishing. The name and the name of the company. From Paramount. Publishing. Then when we want to talk with someone, we ask to speak with somebody by using this kind of phrase. So this is when we want to talk with a specific person. That is not the secretary or the assistant or someone else. Ask to speak to somebody by using this phrase. And we have a, may I speak with? And B, will I speak with? So also we can use the phrase I'm calling about or I am calling to you in order to give a reason for your call. Use I am calling about to introduce a topic and I am calling to to introduce an action. To connect or transfer the call to the reception, it says, one moment, please, I will put you through. 
a few other phrases for transferring. In this case, we're not like leaving messages or wanting to talk with someone else. In this case, it is to transfer the call to another person. So in this case, when we want to transfer the call with someone else, we can use these phrases. Please hold, I will transfer you. May I ask who's calling or who's calling, please? Así que estas frases las estamos utilizando cuando queremos eh, transferir lo que es la llamada a otra persona o a un sector diferente. We can use this kind of sentence in which we can um, transfer the call to another person or another um, maybe section of the, um, the company. If you forgot to identify yourself at the beginning of the call, the receptionist will sometimes use this phrase, these phrases to ask for your name. So in this case, when you are calling, you have to say your name because it is the way in which we can identify ourselves. But in the case that you forget to do it, like to say your name at the beginning of the call, the, um, the receptionist will ask for your information in this point. So for taking and leaving messages, It says, unfortunately, the person, um, the person Brian wants to speak to is not available. And the reception, it says, I'm sorry, Natalie is in a meeting at the moment. Here are some additional phrases to use when another person can answer the phone call. So in this case, it is um, this situation in which we can uh, take the call for that person. So we are going to use some phrases that we can say in that situation, like in the example, because we were saying that uh, the receptionist used a phrase to tell Brian that Natalie is not available. That is that she is on a meeting. So we are going to use some phrases like this. I'm sorry, she is on another call. Then we have another one. I'm sorry, Natalie has left for the day. Then we have another one. I'm sorry, Natalie's not in her office right now. Then we have another one. I'm sorry, she's out of town at the moment. And another one, it says, I'm sorry, she is not available at the moment.
So those are some examples that we can use to take or to leave messages. And it says that we have two uh, common phrases that are used for offering to take a message. So we have two common phrases that we can say when we want to take the message of that people that is calling. So we have these two sentences. And the number one, it says, we'll do, would you like to leave a message? Te gustaría dejar un mensaje? And then we have the number two that is, can I take a message? ¿Puedo tomar un mensaje? ¿Puedo tomar su mensaje? If you don't want to leave a message, you, you can say, no, thanks. I will call back later. And it says that there are two polite ways to leave a message. You can make a statement starting with please or a question starting with could you, usually followed by the verb ask, tell, or remind, and then him. If the message is for a man or her, if the message is for a woman, could you ask her to call me back? Please ask him to call me back. Please tell him or tell her that the documents are ready. Please remind him or remind her that she or he has a dentist appointment tomorrow. And then for the last part that we're going to see about the phone calls or the conversations, it says that the clarifying and confirming information while talking or, or taking the message, uh, the receptionist used two phrases for checking and confirming information. The number one says, let me read that back to you. It's like reading the message to um, let the people know that the message is complete and there is no missing information. So that person can be secure that the receptionist will uh, pass the complete message to the person that she or he is wanted to talk. Then it says, could you spell your last name for me. That is the question that we were saying, the example that um, Helen asked Ryan to spell the last name because in that case, it's like confirming the, um, the name that is correctly written. So we have that two phrases that we can use for the clarifying and confirming information. Then the verb spell, means to say the letters of the word and a riot replies. P as in Boston, A, R, G as in dog, O, S in September. Esta parte, es, eh, solo vamos a agregar un poco de información. Eh, tenemos esas frases que podemos utilizar para dejar los mensajes, para clarificar la información o para confirmar. So in that case, we are talking about that. So, para clarificar o para, um, in this case, para confirmar información, tenemos dos frases. Let me read that back to you. Déjame leer eso para ti. Then in that case is to ask for um, the confirmation of something that is uh, good, right? That is not missing anything about the message. And the second one, Uh, could you spell your last name for me? Puedes deletrear tu nombre o tu apellido para mí. So in that case, like doing this is to uh, writing correctly the name of a person. 
eh, para escribir correctamente el nombre de una persona sin cometer errores. Then it says finishing a call. This is the, the, the ending of the exercise. Finishing a call, it's when you want to finish the conversation. You can use signal phrases. The, these are phrases indicating that the conversation is coming to an end. Well, it was nice talking with you. Thanks for calling. Anyway, I should let you go or I should get going. So in this case, we're going to use this kind of signal phrases. We are going to give a signal that we want to end the call. Then we are going to use this kind of sentence. Para la finalización de la llamada, podemos utilizar estas signal eh, phrases que son aquellas que nos van a, a ayudar a dar signos de que queremos terminar la llamada. Sin sonar be, um, very rude. So in this case, we're going to use the signal phrases to make a, poli a polite way to end the call. Then it says, if you want to promise future contact, you can use some of the phrases from the second conversation. Si queremos decir que vamos a volver a llamar o vamos a tener una conversación en el futuro, podemos utilizar estas frases. I will get in touch in a couple of days. Get in touch is contact. So in that case, it's telling that he or she is going to contact the company again. Then I will call you back a little later. And then we have talk to you soon. Then we have, then you can finish the conversation uh, with one of these final phrases. Bye, take care, have a nice day, and we can respond you to bye. So at the end of the, um, the conversation, we can use this final sentence to let the people know that we finished the conversation. So now we are going to end this part of the telephone conversation and the telephone vocabulary and all of that. We are going to have another thing that is talking about reading. So, terminamos la parte del teléfono que nos llevó un poco de tiempo, ¿verdad? Porque es algo extenso. Eh, vimos un vocabulario, eh, some examples, phrases, and all of that things. But in this case, we are going to end that part because now we are going to talk about another thing. Um, remember that we were saying that we have four macro skills. And in that case, and in which we were talking about the, the four macro skills, we were talking about reading, writing, listening, and speaking. But in this case, we are going to talk about reading. Why we are going to talk about reading again? So in this case, it's because we need to know some things about this process and we need to see some advices to make this activity more, or in this case, easier. So you know that when we are reading something, we are reading a, a book, we are reading an article, we are reading a report, we are uh, reading whatever thing we are going to read, we need to uh, pay attention to the things we are going to read, but also we need to uh, make a summary or a summarizing. And in this case, we are going to learn how to summarize, right? So the topic that we are going to develop in the last moments of this, um, in this, uh, this session, because we have some more uh, minutes, we are going to talk about summarizing. Vamos a hablar de hacer resúmenes cuando leemos de la información importante que eh, necesitamos brindarle a los otros. So, summarizing. Maybe it's kind of hard uh, to make this kind of summaries because uh, when we are learn uh, when we are reading, I mean, um, we can find a lot of important information. 
or we can uh, find a lot of information that we consider that is very um, useful. So in this case, we are going to read something about the, the, um, the summary thing, and then how can we do it to uh, do a good summary? So in this case, we are going to use this topic to, um, to talk about the learning process. And then we're going to use words like teacher and students because you are learning something. And in this case, you are a student. And I can take the, uh, the role of a teacher. So in this case, teaching summarizing seems like it should be easy, maybe. It can sound that it is something easy. Maybe you can say, well, I am very good at summarizing and I can summarize a book in a few words, but we are going to say something else. So when a student summarize, they don't have to come up with any of their own ideas. All they have to do is briefly tell the most important parts of a book or reading passage that they read. So it's very important that when we are going to use a summarize, we are not going to use our own words. In this case, we are not going to use anything about the things that we are thinking. In this case, we are going to read the information, we are going to read the story, and we are going to use that information to get to the point or to find the most important thing in the, in the reading. So, estamos diciendo que para hacer un el resumen no es necesario poner nuestra información. Es más, no debemos poner nuestra información o las cosas que pensamos o las cosas eh, que estamos analizando. Because that is another thing very different when we are creating an analysis about the things that we are thinking when we are reading. In this case, it is not like that because if we have some ideas about the things that we are reading, it is not a summarize, it is an analysis. So in that case, we are not going to use our own words to express the things that we were reading. So then, it sounds pretty easy, but it is not. Teachers have all sorts of cute and colorful ideas to teach. Uh, summarizing uh, strategies. Uh, when we are teaching how to summarize, maybe we can use a lot of colorful things to help the students to understand better or to feel motivated to create this kind of summaries. And we have in internet a lot of ideas that we can um, perform with our students to help them to understand what is the purpose of this thing or this strategy. There is an anchor card, graphic organizers, that somebody wants, but so then methods that we can use, um, all of that can help the students to improve the, this uh, source of information. Then, why can our students summarize text? Why can people um, summarize uh, this kind of information that they are reading? Why people struggle with summarizing text? Well, this is something that we are going to find right now. So in this case, it says that students struggle with summarizing a text because it is um, something that they have a lot of things that maybe we have taught them. It's very confusing for them to just have one thing. Making an example, when I was reading um, some information for maybe a class, an important class that I had when I was younger, uh, in that moment, I feel very, very um stress because I was thinking, what is the main part of this information? What is the most important thing that I need to, to learn 
about this text. And I remember that I am like marking all the ideas that I, I thought that were important. And at the end, I have the whole page uh, marked because all of the information is very useful for me. But in this case, it is not like that because that is not the point of the summarizing because if we are going to summarize something, we are just going to have some few words, but not a whole document. Para esta parte, ¿verdad? Es, es importante de, de pensar eh, que tenemos tantos elementos a veces en la lectura que creemos que todo lo tenemos que marcar, que creemos que todo nos va a servir, pero tenemos que aprender a escoger cuáles son los más importantes y ponerlos en el resumen. No todo lo que vemos en la página, porque ese no es el punto del resumen. Usually, we want students to incorporate what they already know about the topic. We, it, uh, we even take time in class to activate prior knowledge, knowing that students will better understand what they have read if they can relate it to it. But when summarizing, students aren't supposed to incorporate any additional information, only the information that the author chooses to include. Usually, we, we encourage students to think for themselves. We want students to share their opinion and to justify that opinion. But when summarizing students aren't supposed to have their own opinions, they are simply supposed to explain what the author says and things. In this case, we are not going to use our own ideas. We are going to use the words that the author writes in the book or in the article to express what is the main idea of that uh, reading part. So in this case, this is something very uh, complicated to not do because in some cases we want students to share as many details as possible. Because in that case, we can think that uh, sharing a lot of information, we can create a very uh, a better knowledge of the topic, but that is not the point. Uh, how many times have you told a student that they need to add more details? We write more or make it longer. The more details the students include, the better except for in summarizing. When summarizing, students are supposed to only include the most important information, which means a student have to have a firm handle in how to find the main idea. No wonder a student struggled with summarizing text. We were talking about um, the main idea, to find the main idea in a text. So in this case, that information is very useful to complete this task because in that in that case we have some uh like as the advices to find the, the the main idea of the topic so in that case we can uh, ask some questions to find the information and then when we have the information that we need that's that's it we don't need anything else so what makes a good summary um, we are going to learn uh, what things make a good summary. And it says there are a lot of different things that make up a good summary. Some things that should be included in a summary and some things that should not be included. And we have this thing. So let me write like this. So we have summaries should only include information from the passage.
So in this case, I am maybe uh, we are reading a specific chapter or um, of a book. So in that case, when we are making the summary, we are just going to talk about the chapter, not the whole book, because we are not going to talk about the whole book. We are going to talk about a specific part of the book. So in that case, we need to be very careful when we are going to do summaries, because it says summary should only include information from the passage that the people want us to read. Then. Summary should not include your opinion. Then we have another one. Summary should only include the most important information. Then we have another one and it says, summaries are not copied from the passage. And the last one, it says, fiction summaries should include the problem and solution of a text. So we have here something that is very important. So we are going to see um, one by one. The first one, summary should in only include information from the passage, not about the whole thing that we are reading, just the passage that we need to have the information. Summary should not include your opinion. Again, we are not going to use our opinion in this kind of summaries. Summaries should only include the most important information that we are going to share with someone else. Uh, summaries are not copied from the passage. It is not like copying everything that we have in the passage. We have to create that summary from the information that we have in the passage, but that is not the whole thing. And fiction summaries should include the problem and solution of a text. Tenemos ahí, ¿verdad?, algunas cuestiones que tenemos que seguir con, la, eh, con los resúmenes. Y ya sabemos que no tenemos que incluir eh, otra información que no sea la que nos están pidiendo del pasaje que nos están pidiendo, del capítulo que nos están pidiendo o una, eh, una parte específica del de libro o de, eh, de un artículo. Luego, no vamos a incluir nuestra opinión porque aquí no nos vale eh, escribir nuestra opinión o decir nuestra opinión, sino que simplemente vamos a eh, rephrase, vamos a volver a, a utilizar las palabras que tenemos en el artículo o en el libro para hablar de ese tema. Then, summary should only include the most important information. I think this is the hardest part of the summaries because we need to find what are the most important information that we have in the in the in the reading part. Um, tenemos que incluir solo las partes importantes y a veces eh, no podemos diferenciar eh, de las partes importantes que nosotros creemos que tiene cuál es la más importante porque no las podemos incluir todas. Then eh, summaries are not copied from the passage. Error bastante común que se comete a la hora de hacer un, un resumen es escribir todo lo que está en el pasaje o en el artículo a modo de eh, resumen. That is not the point of creating or doing a summary. In this case, it is just copying the information that we have in that space. 
And in the last one, it says fiction summaries should include the problem and solution of a text. Aquí se tiene que incluir el problema y la solución en este tipo de eh, resúmenes. And in this case, fiction. That is fiction. So practicing each of these aspects of summarizing in isolation, in its mean uh, by ourselves alone, can help students become better summarizers. However, just telling students what make up a good summary is not enough. So in this case, just telling the information about a good um, summary is not enough because we need to um, practice doing this until we get the point of the summary thing. So, we are going to see just at the end, because it's almost the end, we are going to see something else because we're going to end this part. We have this thing that is called summarizing lessons. A better way. It is called this, uh, like this, summary lesson, a better way. Since summarizing goes against what students will not really want to do, we can just tell the students what makes a good summary and expect um, that that is one that is going to be enough. People don't just need to see example of good summaries. Uh, they also need to see examples of bad summaries and be able to understand what make it bad. So in that case, we can have this kind of examples. We can have good examples about the summarizing thing. And also we can have the bad examples of summarizing. Why? Because we are going to create a, a comparison between the good summary and the bad summary. And we are going to see in which um, cases we are going to make a mistake, but in that in that case, it is not like in the first um, in the first moment we are going to have a good summary. That is not the point because we need to make mistakes to understand uh, what is the main point of these exercises. Así que para eh, poder eh, nosotros crear un buen resumen, tenemos que ver dos tipos de ejemplos. El buen ejemplo, el que está correcto en la, en la forma correcta de hacerlo y el que está malo, el que tiene errores. ¿Por qué? Porque así hacemos la comparación de qué elementos contiene este resumen, de qué forma fue escrito, eh, qué énfasis se le dio a la idea. Y así podemos nosotros eh, incluso ver nuestros propios eh, eh, resúmenes y marcar en qué partes nos hemos equivocado y qué partes podemos cambiar. Before you summarize in lesson, write several different summaries of a reading passage. Make a couple of these summaries deliberately bad. Include a summary that has all sorts of unimportant information and another summary that includes opinion that aren't from the text. Make sure you also have one good summary. Again, we need to practice to get uh, these kind of things. It is not like we are going to practice uh, talking in English. It is not like we are going to practice hearing something in English. It is not like we are just going to uh, write something in English. We are going to develop another skill. In this case, we are going to have this summarizing skill that we can uh, do when we have this kind of level in English. And we are going to use it for everyday actions. So, para esta parte donde dice que antes de poder presentar o de decir, sí, puedo hacer un buen eh, resume, vamos a cometer errores de manera eh, consciente. Vamos a escoger un pasaje un capítulo o un artículo y vamos a crear diferentes tipos de resúmenes. Muchos pueden ser malos, otros pueden ser buenos, otros pueden llevar detalles que ustedes saben que no deberían de incluir. Let's see. Oh, um, we are almost done, Nady. We are almost done. 
So in that case, um, we are going to create, we are going to practice, we are going to develop our skills doing this kind of exercises that is very important. So it says, after reading the passage with your class or in a small group, um, you are going to show the people the different summaries and um, you are going to have a discussion about the this kind of summaries that you create. And uh, uh, through this kind of conversation, we are going to find which one is better uh, which one has the elements that we need to create a good summary. And then we are going to mark the bad parts of the other summaries that we create that are wrong. So in that case, we can find if people uh, really understand what is the uh, purpose of this kind of actions. So let's see. Yes, we have just um, some minutes. Let me tell you something. We are going to end this a course with this topic that is the summarizing or how to create a summary. Now, it's the last day of this course. If you haven't uh, end the exercises in the platform, you just have, let me see, like two hours, two hours to end the work in the platform if you want to have your certificate for the, this course. So, solo tienen dos horas para terminar los ejercicios si no, lo has, si no los han terminado en la plataforma. Ustedes saben que hoy se termina el curso, ya no hay más tiempo. Si no terminaron sus ejercicios, no van a tener el certificado del curso. Así que si no han terminado, si han dejado algún ejercicio sin terminar, eh, solo tienen dos horas para terminarlo. El curso en la plataforma termina a la medianoche. So you have to work in the platform if you um, have not done all the exercises. Um, now, I just want to say um, thank you for your time. I know it's very hard to be here uh, because of the hour. And um, maybe we are like very, very tired after a long day in our jobs. So I know that it's very hard to be like this in this moment. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Um, keep improving, keep practicing, keep learning because learning is never stops. So we are going to say goodbye. Thank you for your time and have a really, really good night. Good night, teacher. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.